since I think a lot of residents had missed the noon conference where we talked about the upcoming Journal Club, I was going to do a recording again of my slides and the discussion. Um, hopefully, uh, this will be distributed by the Chiefs so that when we do start doing Journal Clubs during noon conference, which is, should be the last Friday of the month, everyone understands what's going on. So, this discussion is really on how to journal club or not how to journal literature and so what we're trying to do in terms of our new conferences for journal club moving forward. So I know it's difficult for people and it sometimes feels like there's just too much information coming in, especially for you know interns when they're still just trying to learn just the normal things, but it, it's really not this bad. I mean, it may feel like a deluge of information, but I'm, we're gonna talk in a way that hopefully we can get us through this. So one is, I'm gonna ask you guys how to stay updated on the literature. So I've already been able to do this twice before with a couple of the residents. And you know, if you wanna hit that QR code, you can feel free to update the Padlet, which this will take you to. But I'm gonna show you exactly what um, we've already come up with. So um, in the past, a couple of residents have said that they do case studies and do manuscript lit reviews. Um, another person has said they had used the scope, which is an, uh, a, a weekly newsletter, JAMA and AMA morning reports. Those emails can come every day. Um, others have said they use podcasts, they use Twitter, there's a journal club app. They also use the scope, you know, Med Twitter again. They do their own research, podcast, Med Twitter. ACP also has a newsletter. They talk to their attendings. And there's actually a QX Read, I think, that comes as a newsletter, but it's also an app on, on the iPad and the phone. So those are just sort of some examples of what other people have come up with um, during our previous discussions on this. Feel free to add to that in the future. So use the QR code if you wanna to add to that and um, we'll have that for future uh, talks. So what do I do? Well, I have the literature come to me. I, I use my Gmail, my email extensively and I use Gmail because there is a, uh, Google comes with an extensive and very um, very good search feature versus uh, saying you use like uh, Outlook or the other Microsoft uh, OSU email. So I definitely get newsletters and uh, one thing I want to say about newsletters is the fact that I don't read them all. I skim a lot of them and what I do is like what I take away from them is if I see a topic or an important article that comes up over and over again then I sort of take mental note. But then as I archive them into my email, if I never need to reference them or find it again, I can easily do a search. What are some newsletters I use? So AMA Morning Rounds is something that we talked about already. Um, so sometimes blogs, you can subscribe to the blog post. So here, Joe Topf, who is um, a well-known within the nephrology world and, in, and on Med Twitter, um, he has a blog called Precious Body Fluids. And because of the way his blog is set up, you can actually subscribe to the blog so that every time he writes a new post, you'll get an email about it. Uh, New England Journal of Medicine Journal Watch. So they, this is a great way um, on staying on top of literature. And oftentimes you can, for a lot of these journal club and journal watches, you can actually specify what are the areas of interest you have and then only get emails and on those specific interests. ACP internists that comes I get it by the mail, I used to at least, and you can also get electronic versions of that. And you know, for those people who really like critical care, uh, life in the fast lane, maybe the EMIM pay, um, residents know about this one. Um, I know we have a lot of people interested in, in critical care, so Palm CCM is also a blog that also publishes a newsletter. And critical care reviews newsletter is also a great one. So, Another way I have the literature coming to me is through Twitter. And I think other people already said that in their in the Padlet page. Um, here, here's a smattering of people that I follow. Um, and I think it's, it's an important thing to see. Um, what's great about Twitter is there's always a discussion when people are posting things. And definitely it can also feel like there's just a lot going on, but definitely if you curate to people you really want to follow, you can create lists, you can follow hashtags. and it actually makes it more of a fun way of keeping on top of the literature, I, be, I believe. So what do we see on Twitter? So we see, you know, people who are like the, um, Uncle Bob or Robert Centaur here who developed the center criteria for, for strep throat. Um, he has a blog and he 
com commonly posts about that blog on his Twitter as well as other, other musings. Other ways Twitter is used is, you know, people can sort of amplify their own work. So, you know, if it was in a journal that someone may not have caught, when they talk about it, they can present that their own works on Twitter. As well as other ways to develop and show their work. So, you know, if they just wanted to share pearls, they can be done. You can develop graphics, infographics in this case, you know, things that are similar to um, visual abstracts. So another way I get literature is through podcasts, obviously. Um, I might be a little biased on this. So things like the Rounds Table, Rumblecast, Curbsiders. Now, at the end, I do have a sort of primer of sorts of a bunch of people I follow on Twitter, my favorite podcasts, newsletters that you guys can take a look at. I'll share the QR code for that, and you can take a look at that later. So, um, so I shared my things, and I'm going to give you my sort of primer. Um, I want to show, I want you guys to be able to share things that you like. And so this will obviously be running and always updating. So here's the QR code to another Padlet. As you can see here, um, some other people have had their favorite mentions. So Curbsiders, which is great. The Cribsiders, which is my pediatric podcast. Cardio Nerds, which is fantastic. Um, we have the Nocturnus here, which is uh, more narrative medicine, uh, sort of like, um, the Moth, I don't know if you guys, if anyone else has listens to pod, podcasts, but The Moth in terms of like narrative stories, but these are all obviously medically related. The Scope of Ken comes up. NFJC, which is a Twitter-based journal club, a fantastic journal club that in fact, actually it, they have, it's so popular that when they meet, they actually meet in separate different time zones so more people can actually interact. Uh, Mad Tutorials is a, um, a handle on Twitter where um, they're sort, they sort of collate a bunch of med, med threads or tutorials that are going on so that they're easily searchable and indexed. They actually have a website as well. Um, the Rounds Table podcast as well, Poem EM Crit. So uh, EM Crit, which is a podcast, uh, and then Poem Crit, uh, which is a blog that is part of the sort of the, the, the website as a whole, um, which is done by Josh Farkas. Um, let's say emergency medicine case is another one that people had had liked. So, you know, if you have your favorite one, please update into this sort of this wall. And when I do these talks in the future, we'll have even more resources. So I'm going to sort of delve into what we plan on doing with our journal club moving forward, which is going to be our journal club during the noon conference time. And right now we sort of are slated for the last Friday of every block. So what I want to do is I sort of want to talk to you about how to prepare these discussions um, because I, I really want everyone to be interactive during these discussions. You know, typically um, a journal club, you may just have, you know, one or two articles. Someone comes, they present it, they give you like 20 slides. Everyone sort of glazes over because no one has actually read the article. And then we sort of try to try to have a discussion. So what I want to do is I sort of want to shift it so that we know that the uh, there are active participants, people who have present who have uh, done the deep dive in these articles, but then their job is to educate us about these articles and then promote discussion from us. So um, we'll talk about how, you know, how I want uh, presenters to sort of discuss how articles are sort of valid, how they're important, how they're applicable to our patients. So there are going to be sort of two different types of articles that we're going to uh, present at our noon conferences. So one is we're going to have short takes. So Basically, almost everyone who, who comes to the new conference should be expected to present at least one article. Um, and I think the chiefs are going to help me try to decide who, uh, who everyone's going to show up because I know, especially on Friday afternoons, there might be people who will be going to like um, night float that night or whatnot. Um, but almost everyone else should be expected to come to journal club and at least present one article. Now, these presentations aren't supposed to be huge. I really want them to have you know, it can't, doesn't need to be a huge article. I think good choices for this are like systematic reviews, narrative views, guideline statements. And really, I would like um, if a resident brings these to just sort of say, hey, there was the new GNI guidelines for asthma. Here are like two or three takeaways that I found were interesting. And here's a link to the article or um, the guidelines for you to check out in the future. So something like that, I think would be great for just sort of short, what I'm going to call short takes. Um, 
so in addition to that, um, the other types of articles that are going to be presented during noon conference are sort of one to three, you know, primary discussion articles. And we haven't decided exactly how many they're going to be, but at least one and maybe two. Um, basically, these are more in-depth discussions and still, you know, are not expecting res all the residents to have read these articles. If you have, then great. But really, the onus is on the presenter to sort of um, to take an article that they have um, decide upon themselves or one that has been determined by me or our chief resident to, to, to present. And then they would present that article as if no one else has read the article. And, you know, it's expected to be done pretty quickly, you know, in, in, in five or less slides, which means about, you know, two to five minutes. I think that seems very reasonable. So if you're doing the larger discussion, how do you prepare discussion? So the first thing you want to look at is sort of what is the question? So it's usually a, a causal question, like does X cause Y or what effect does X have on Y? And often can be phrased in many ways, but uh, often this, the object of the study was to evaluate this or the authors hypothesize that. It, you know, it is possible, and if possible in the question, you know, are you able to sort of, uh, include the primary outcome, like is it what's the, was it all cause all cause mortality we're looking at or something similar, and hopefully the the duration of follow up for these so that helps sort of frame the question for everyone else in the group. The the other thing I want people to to do when they're sort of doing these primary discussions is what was the comparison? So what were the comparison groups that were defined? Was there a placebo controlled group? What was the intervention group? You know, if it's a descriptive study with no comparisons, what exactly was measured? And if possible, you know, include the study population. Like, who did they look at? That's how we decide what's applicable to our patients. And then what's the inclusion exclusion criteria? These are the important parts to present in those, you know, that five minutes, those five slides you have. After this, you know, and the important thing is what are the results? So at minimum, you got to talk about the primary outcome, but then what did the authors find? Was it a positive or negative trial in compared to the, uh, in respect to the primary outcome? You know, what's the biggest, what's the biggest take home point? You know, this is, this is the one pearl. If you had, if you were able to encapsulate this entire study, what's that pearl you get from it? And interesting secondary outcomes to subgroup analyses. And I think these are always areas that are interesting to talk about as well, because you know, oftentimes subgroup analyses and secondary outcomes are places for, um, for driving more hypothesis and not necessarily that we can make a definitive um, decision or choice on our future practice based on these. So lastly, I really want these, these, uh, these primary presenters to sort of give us a critical appraisal. And so um, a lot of these were stolen from one of my colleagues, Dr. Ra Raul Kanatra, who's over at the VA in Boston. But he says that there are only three things that can explain the results of any study. One is truth, two is chance, and three is bias, okay? And if you keep those in mind, it will help you in the long run in trying to just critically appraise almost anything. So here's an example of a weak critical appraisal. This study had a lot of flaws and therefore I don't trust the results. It just doesn't tell you enough and is not a strong way of giving you an appraisal. We identified at least two sources of bias, one source of chance towards a positive finding. For these reasons, I am concerned that the results could be an overestimate of truth. So this is a much better example of what a stronger appraisal is. So I want to leave it with you. Um, I do want to make this a um, evolving process. Um, I want people to, to take away from this, like what, what, can, what you want to get out of Journal Club and how to make it better. So, Here's another QR code to another Padlet. Um, I don't believe there was much response on future ones. Uh, so previously you said read deeper ideas, don't necessarily give full appraisal. So I think that's what we're hoping for. If we get a, a bigger breadth of information that everyone has brought, I think that would be good. And a wide array of topics from outpatient to critical care topics. And hopefully because we're making it more um, individualized to whoever brings your stuff, like if you like cardiology, you can bring your own articles. I think that will hopefully get us a, a wide array of examples. So um, if you get a chance, I think that'd be great. I'll be checking on that Padlet wall in the future. Here's the QR code for that. Um, go to that, drop a couple of, of things that you th think would be interesting. And especially as Journal Club evolves over the year, keep on adding to it and I'll be checking on that routinely. So I want to thank you for 
hanging out with this sort of quick journal club primer discussion. Um, here is the QR code to some just primer of my research, including people to follow on Twitter, newsletters, podcasts, all that sort of thing. Um, and um, thank you. Hopefully that was pretty quick. And we'll get this to share to, to everyone in the residency for future reference. Have a good one. Bye.